Uh-huh. Yeah, don't mind if I do. Thank you, Home Depot. Hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. I wasn't planning on filming, but that's a good deal, and I have a feeling we're going to be doing some damage. I just came to Home Depot because I need some pool salts. They are stocked up, and I always like to be able to show my plant friends the plants. And they look nice. I love the succulents when they're right. Like, look at that beautiful row. A nice row of just echeverias. And the Semper Vivums, they look so good. I really hope that the wave petunias count as that sale, because over here, the ones that say classic, there aren't any wave petunias on those racks, but this rack over here that I pulled it from has a sign on it, and it also has the wave petunia. Oh, well, I don't know. Figure it out. I'm sure it's fine. It's a nice dianthus. Not going to get it, because dianthus always fizzle out when it gets hot, and you got to prune them and, you know, do stuff to keep them going, which isn't that big of a deal, but... Not something I feel like doing. Where's the name? I'm looking right at the tag. Paint in the Town. Okay, there's the name. Paint in the Town Magenta. The, kind of a bubblegum pink to be calling it magenta, but maybe they get darker with the weather. You know, warmer temperatures, maybe they darken up. Look at these, all these one-day sales. Is that normal? Is that a new thing? Is it really a one-day sale? Do they just put a new thing on it every day to change it? What a good deal. Look how cute those little U's are. Those are adorable. Well, that's a hibiscus. This is the first lady of one of these at home. It's a nice pink flower on it. Not a ton going on with the tropicals just yet. It looks like they're probably just now starting to get them in. Mandevillas. Is this the tricolor braid? Yeah, tricolor braided. Hibis what are these? That's, that's pretty cool looking. Handwoven living braided willow. Three to six feet, I assume that's going to require a good amount of pruning to keep it that way. Do we have a, it's just a salic species. We need more than that. This is hardy to negative 30. These are cool. Like, really cool. How much are these? How much? I want, I need them all. Oh, found a price hiding down here inside of the center block. Fifty nine ninety eight. That's not bad. I've just decided. I have nothing to compare it to. <laughs> it's not something I've seen all that often, but, you know, time and energy goes into making these things. Those are pretty cool. I don't I think my cart's not, I need a bigger cart. Seems like the kind of thing you'd buy two of or just have one, just one and it would be a centerpiece, right? You don't, I, don't, I don't need two. Do I? No, I think one's fine. But what if I end up wanting two and I come back and they're all gone? Okay, definitely getting one, don't know which one. Too many choices. That's why I said before, I just, I need them all. Just get them all, that makes it so much easier. <laughs> and then have them spread all over the patio all year and have no idea what to do with them. That's the thing. It's a surprise plant. So need to know what I'm going to do with it. I can think of several things. It's hardly a negative 30. It could go into the landscape. Though I think that would look maybe like a fish out of water. Probably. I don't know. You know, one is fine. It's a plant that should stand out on its own. Don't need multiples. I think it's because in the pictures they show three of them. And all different sizes. So I, that's not what I'm going to do with it. Just one. One is plenty. And they've got all the little ones in. <laughs> like, this always gets me. I'm never going to spend the $8 on it, but whenever I see them, it's just, it's so stinking cute. The baby majesty palms are freaking adorable. I mean, all little palms, little plants in general. There's just something about the majesty palms. They're just stinking cute. And uh, here are the house plants. <laughs> Not much to look at there. Probably more inside. I don't even know if I'm going to go inside. Depends. I need pool salts and a hose and to get out of here. We're supposed to have really bad storms today. So far it's okay, but I don't know how long that's going to last. Oh, look at these dahlias. Those are nice. Aren't they beautiful with the double like spider spoon? That's not what that is. Cactus. That's what I meant to say cactus-ish type flowers on them. Very pretty. They look good. I'm not gonna bother. I like to pick my dahlias out where I know what the type is. I can gauge the height and everything they just say dahlia. <laughs> they say 10 to 18 inches high. That's cool. They're more of a border type dahlia. I mean, they really are screaming at me though. I can guarantee you I'm gonna leave here and go, oh, should have gotten some dahlias. Although, I can't find pool salts anywhere. Pool supplies at all. Nothing. Like, no nets, chlorine tabs, anything. And I asked an employee, and they don't seem to know either. We go into a different location, maybe they will have more fun things to look at at that one. I like this blend. That's a nice blend with the orange and the magenta. I'm not a fan of the red. Those look pretty nice. Oh. They're 80. 
I, that's fine, right? I can't say that the price needed to match the sign that I saw tucked into a brick in the parking lot. Now getting one makes even more sense. Also, the, it's orange. The one I saw online, I don't even, I didn't tell you guys. Needed a new hose and a uh, three quarter inch, 100 foots. I haven't really been able to find ones that I really liked. I like this one. It has great reviews. It's bright orange, like bright, bright neon. I don't, you can see it. I don't have to go any further. I didn't see anything that was brown or gray, which would have been ideal. So just had to stick with the bright orange. And bright side to having to go to another Home Depot is maybe they'll have more of these $7.50 baskets. That would be nice. I need to see what's happening here at car wash time. It's very long overdue. But I don't really know what the point is. It's just gonna rain and there's gonna be more pollen, but I feel like this is too much. It's embarrassing at this point. Huh? What do we think? Shiny again. Gotta love that. There's still, I'm noticing that from the rain guard things that that's not working out all that well. I think I'm gonna have to go in and hand clean that. That's not, that has nothing to do with anything. I'm at the other Home Depot now, realizing that all that camera movement might make people dizzy. Might have been too much. Hopefully didn't make anybody dizzy. It's um, getting pretty cloudy out there. So hopefully can pull this off. I don't know if that like one day sale thing, I hope that's at multiple locations because I really would like a few more of those baskets and I need some use too. I need to remember that while I'm here, I have some use I need to replace. Oh, and of course the pool salt, the main reason I'm here. I'm gonna start off with a flatbed. I know well enough since I'm getting salt, I'm going to need it. I think that the plant selection is gonna be pretty much the same here, but if anything different pops up, I'll be sure to show everyone. Oh, they have the Pearl von Nuremberg. Is that the purple one, I think? of the Echeverias. I, I could never say for sure what is that a tag, but that's what they look like. Those look good. Oh, and these chairs are scantia. Look at that color, those are beautiful. I also have sunglasses on. See through the sunglasses, they're like electric green. Still really pretty though. It's a nice purple flower on them. Those are fun. Those are great perennials. They'll fill in a space really, really well. That's a great price on the limelight standards. A lot of the nurseries have been selling these things for like two, three hundred bucks the last couple of years. I'm glad to see that's coming down. Is it just limelights? They have pinky winkies. I wish they had the limelight prime and a tall standard. They come in a small standard, but it would be nice if there were these big... I shouldn't even be talking this much. This music here is very loud. It's going to be a huge waste of time. Yes, I should have gotten a bigger cart. Okay, they're doing the same thing. 10 inch hanging basket, two for $15. I didn't see that sign on any of the carts that had the wave petunias on them so I don't I don't I have no idea what I'm doing at this point and I don't what am I gonna do with them where am I gonna put them oh wait maybe oh well here they're actually labeled as wave petunias and not as the 10 inch basket the signs right here so I would think that yeah that should be good right I think so I don't know I'm gonna figure it out I'm gonna just grab a few and hopefully they'll be 750 you would think since they're on the same rack they should be right that's be okay one scap hello look at that isn't that beautiful 750 a pop what a great deal most of these aren't gonna be used at my house so you're wondering why i'm buying so many it's for someone else there's a dog it's gone there's a cute little dog over there i swear i'm not hallucinating there really was a dog well, i'd call that a success <laughs> what do you think should i go to lowe's now no oh, that actually is tempting only because there's one right there but uh, I have a feeling the car is about to be very full. So it's not likely a reason to go. All right, where do I probably start with these, right? I just realized I have 320 pounds of salt here, which means I should probably be redistributing things so that they're over the wheels more evenly. I bet I could do this and still have room to go to another nursery, but I probably shouldn't do it. <laughs> okay, maybe not. I'm just curious. I want to know what they have, that's all. Okay, so how much are the six packs? They are. 9.98. I always like to know that I got a good deal. Okay, so I could have gotten a puny little six pack for 10 bucks. Yes, they'll grow. Which variety are these? Doesn't say. Nice if it said on here just says it's a spreader, huh? Okay, so that's not a bad deal. Couldn't do that with the uh, Vistas from Proven Winners, that's for sure. But the other waves that I picked up, so larger, where are they? So it's something similar to this. That was at $5.98, and those big baskets were $7.50. Actually, I think the ones that I got were $4.98. So that's still, I mean, five bucks versus seven, come on, what a great deal, because for $7.50, I think there are four of them in those pots, and they're already big and developed. It's a good deal, practically getting an adrenaline rush. Often know when I saved a good amount of money and got some nice big plants. 
Mm, the citrus. That was I didn't that was probably an odd noise. The citrus and the rosemary and the lavender, like this whole spot right here smells fantastic. This is a lavender, it's an Anuk lavender twilight. Has a deeper purple on the top. It's really pretty. I really wish I could get the vistas in six packs. That would be so nice. But that's just not a thing. They grow them out bigger than that before you get them, which I understand to an extent. You know, 30 bucks for a basket like that, that's not bad. But there's no way I'm going to be interested in something like that after just spending $7.50 on those wave petunias, which, yeah, don't get as big. I think the, the ones I got, they said like 10 to 12 inch, something like that, so it's much smaller. But to just have around some planters or really in the landscape, that's where they really do their thing and look beautiful. I need some sweet potato vines, but that's not the type that I was looking for. Compact, hot pink, sun patience, love those. Oh, what variety of Vinca is this? It just says Vinca. Maybe it says 12 pack Vinca. No, doesn't tell. Oh, let me take my sunglasses off, make sure I still like them. Yeah, those are really pretty. Oh, it's looking pretty. These variegated iris are absolutely Beautiful, I love those. Variegated sweet iris. That's what that says. What kind of begonias are these? These are interesting. Oh, the big red green leaf. Get pretty big. Mounding habit. It's like a round chunky dragon wing begonia. I don't really I don't even know where to go here. Now one thing I'm a little bit disappointed in is I was hoping that since we got the bump up to a zone seven that maybe the spring selection would change at the nurseries, but it's looking like it's pretty much the same stuff. Which this isn't a bad thing. We have really good selection around here compared to a lot of places, but I was just hoping for some new things. Or even just to get more of the Southern Living plant collection. They have a bunch here, but they could have more, that's for sure. They have some things that I think would do well here. An adorable little holly, a little chonker. They have the Eliangus, which are nice. They've had these here for a couple years, though. <laughs> I'm thinking about maybe giving them a try. I just feel like if the Euonymus haven't been doing well in the winter times, I can't imagine the Eliangus are going to do well either. Holy frickin' Iris! Look at the size of this thing! It's a beast! Those are gigantic, like maybe three feet? Something like that? They're big. Iris are plants that tend to stick around for a long time, so that's something I always want to make sure I do plenty of research on before buying them. I want to make sure I'm planting the right kind. The red sky. So it's like a sky pencil, but has a reddish bronzy tip on it. That's neat. I like that. Okay, it's a lot of shrubbery and annuals. Not a ton is different. These are beautiful. You guys seen these before? I love these. Sunshine Legostrum. You know, I set all that stuff out the Southern Living plants, and there's a whole bunch of them over here. Mostly azaleas, though, which there's nothing wrong with. It's that time of the year. Azaleas are lovely. I mean, look at that flower. Beautiful? What kind is that? It's uh, Autumn Starburst. That's cool. Chick charms. Love them. Those are fun. I think it's time to go. I'm not going to get anything. I've got my Vinca here. Probably go home. There's a lot of stuff to get out of the car. What is this? <laughs> what? Australian Black Pine, huh? That's what this is? Uh, nope. Got that one wrong. Look at the hot pink lavender. That's cool. It really is a like vibrant. Mm, okay, I took my sunglasses off. It's not that vibrant. It's... I like them. The sun believable, you know, repeat blooming sunflowers, helianthus. I think they're awesome, but it's just, it just makes me think fall. I haven't really thought about that. Like, what if they made a mum that bloomed all summer long, like started in mid to late spring and went all summer? then would I start to hate them? Because I'm like, no, no, that's a fall plant that shouldn't be around yet. Because sunflowers are like classic summer. They peak in the summer, but it's still in my brain, the association is so strong that it's just, no, this is fall. It's just make it go away. It's not fall yet. Not even summer. Yeah, see, it fit. Barely. There is a little spot in here for the lavender to sit inside of and the space over there for the vinca. Okay, I don't know What's going to happen from this point on, I guess, I mean, there's kind of, I could show you everything I got, but here it is, right? I don't know how much more detail I need to go into other than this, but it might be fun to set things up and see what they look like together. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm actually in the midst of filming last week's vlog while this is happening. That always scrambles my brain. So chances are there's going to be an abrupt change. Several days will pass and maybe something will be going on. Probably be looking at the plants and getting more plants, I would imagine.
Look who's being a good boy. Yeah, I know. I'm back at the Home Depot. It's been two days. I got home with that hose that I grabbed from the other Home Depot, and the hose reel I have is broken, so I had to come back and get a new one. Which makes sense. It can be broken. It's very old. Not surprised by that. And look at all the new plants they have since I was just here a couple days ago. There's so much. There's palm trees and Eugenias and lots of hibiscus. Come here, Turbs. Come on. Turbo. Come on. The hibiscus some alocasias, the eugenias, the music is always really loud at this Home Depot, so that's why I don't film here all that often. As long as I keep talking, I don't think that it'll pick up on it. Maybe I could be wrong, I'm not sure. Some palm trees, some queens, foxtails, I saw some adenidias, and they are 80 bucks. 80 dollars, huh? That's, that's one heck of a price. Those things you spend like 25 bucks. You guys like these? I think I do. I don't know why I've never talked about them before. It's the scotch brooms. Really great xyroscapey plants. Good for rock gardens. Look at the flowers on them. They have really nice flowers. Just interesting, almost Snapdragon-esque, maybe. I don't know what You can see it. I don't have to describe it. They're fun. Kind of like a hardy Roselia. But it's close as you're going to get to that in zone 5, right? Minus 20? Yeah, zone 5. Cool looking plants. I'm not going to bother with them. I will kill them. There's way too much water in my yard. It's probably also better if I just leave because you see plants are happening again. I needed six. Now that I have more, so I went ahead and grabbed those. I got the hose reel. Yeah, I'm at another nursery. Here's the deal. I had an order pickup from Monrovia here at Sherwood's Forest, and I wasn't planning on filming it, just like I wasn't planning on filming at Home Depot, but look what they have. They have the Redemption called Casey's. Exciting to see those in the nurseries and the Pharaoh's masks. I think those are going to be all over the place this year. I've been seeing those for pre-order for like Anywhere from 20 to 40 bucks at most nurseries for the springtime. I don't know how much they are. I don't have a price on them. I might grab one. I have some on pre-order, but that doesn't always work out. Since I'm here, maybe I may as well. That when I'm doing a pickup, I always feel bad if I don't pick something up. 44 on the Pharaohs. Not too bad. May as well grab one. Before I leave, look how big these Coetheas are. These things are huge. Giant. Look pretty good, too. Leaves are holding on to them nicely. Nice elephant ears. You need, he keeps tangling me up. You know better than that. Done enough leash training with you. What are you doing? Get it together, Turbo. Oh, they have Portoras. These are nice. Love a Portora. It's kind of like a Borneo giant, but a little bit darker. And they have really like more of a serrated ripple on their leaf. I'm at another nursery. <laughs> this is Greenscape. It's right down the street from Sherwoods. And he needed some more walking time, so I figured, hey, why not? And they just got all their tropicals in. Look at it. Doesn't it look amazing? Come on. Look at that. They're absolutely stacked. Serendipity alocasias. What are you? Very full. Black magic. Blue Hawaii. Love the blue Hawaii. <laughs> not quite as easy to hold the camera and walk around and look at things when you got a 110-pound lab pulling at your hands, but you get the picture. Lots of beautiful stuff. These adenidias look great. Nice big full trunks on them. Oh, look at the sides of these seminal pink hibiscus. That's a big full bush. Get your mind out of the gutter. I know what I said. Where's the price? Turbo. Hey, Turbo, we're over here. Come over here. What are you doing? Okay, so now I'm torn because they have these giant seminal bushes, which I don't see really very often at all. They're usually just that standard 10 inch size, but they also have the seminals in the extra large actual standards, you know, the ones that are trained or grafted onto the rootstock. When I said standard before, I meant standard 10 inch container versus the nice big ones like these. That's not one of them though. Oh, oh, this is beautiful. It's that yellowish orange pink I was talking about at the other nursery before. Pardon the background noise, by the way. This is a beautiful hibiscus. Who are you? And do you come in another size? Let's don't think I want a big one. Though. There's some beautiful flowers though. Okay, next objective. Walk around, find that in a smaller size, and then decide on the bigger seminal pink. Um, excuse you, excuse you, you just, how'd you do that? Oh, good, and they have gingers. This is, my cart's already full of annuals. I don't know how I'm gonna get anything else on it. There, see? Huge. Look at that, isn't that big? It's so beautiful. No price. I'm gonna assume it's probably the same as the others, more than likely, which is pricey, but not terrible considering that they're standard and they're big. They're big standards. That's the only one they have of the seminal pink and the large size. They have the little ones. I kind of I like the big ones more though. Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to go get it? I threw it. 
and you're just staring at it. Why do you want me to throw it if you're not going to go go get the toy? You're free. Go get it. He keeps doing this thing where he's like waiting for me to give him permission five times over, and I don't know what that's about. Turbo, go get it. I'm blocking. Toby pooped on the patio. Go get it, Turbo. Go on. You're free. Do it. There you go. Good boy. I don't know what his deal is. Anyways, it, you can't tell. Home now, obviously. And uh, there are quite a few new plants. We can have a look at them for the most part. I think, you know, the majority of them are all wave petunias, right, from Home Depot. So you pretty much, you've seen it. But I picked up an, a, what was I going to say, a Monrovia order. I picked up a Monrovia order at Sherwoods, which I already told you all about. While I was there, I was trying to grab a few extra plants from the nursery when I do those online orders because I feel, like, I don't know, I just feel bad going in there and just taking plants I ordered online. I don't know if they're getting a cut or not. It's great to support locals and they had some stuff that I like. So I grabbed a few plants while I was there and then y'all saw me go over to Greenscape and I had my little hibiscus fiasco. And then I got home and there's a package from Proven Winners on the front porch. This is just the natural of late, the natural? This is just the nature of late April into May because all of my winter orders and things start flying in the last two weeks of April into the like first two weeks of May. So a lot of stuff showing up at the nurseries where I do orders from those places. Oh, and later on in the afternoon when I got home, it's the next day from what y'all just saw. Yesterday when I got home, I got an email from Sugar Creek, another local nursery. They're fantastic that my order had come in there as well and was ready to be picked up but at that point I was like I can't I need to come home and get some things planted and make some room and then I'll go pick that up and we, that'll be in a different video. It's a fairly large amount of plants and uh, some of them I think are more unique and could use some more description as opposed to just a ton of wave petunias and some annuals and a few perennials it's going to be a few <laughs> a few. I think that might be understating things quite a bit. As far as the hibiscus go, you know, when in doubt just get them both. No, okay, Toby pooped right on the patio directly in front of us. I'm going to clean that up. We can go over look at the plants and but when I said when in doubt just get them both. I went ahead and put most of my annuals back to make up for the difference of just getting both of those. And I put a few other things back in the cart. We'll talk about it, get a better shot of everything. It's still early, <laughs> waiting for things to warm up a smidge, maybe get a few things planted. I don't know. I don't know what the plan is for the rest of the video. Maybe nothing, who knows. Suppose should probably start from least exciting to most exciting. That probably won't happen. I'll forget what order I'm going in at some point. The new hose. It's, I wouldn't say a huge improvement over the red one, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a big red hose. I have a one inch hose over here, right there. Big, thick, girthy hose. Great water pressure out of that, but uh, one inch hoses, can't really come by them, very, at least not very affordably. A couple hundred bucks usually for one hundred feet of it, and it's really hard to find a hose reel that will fit them. Since the hose I had over here needed to be replaced, it had gotten really brittle. It was, I don't know, probably 15 years old. It was like crunchy. You barely touch it and it would get holes in it. So that was officially done. I decided I wanted to bump it up to a three quarter inch hose just for better water pressure. And the only one that they had, y'all were there, I think, maybe I recorded it, I don't know, is neon orange. And I knew that it was orange because I had picked out this hose before I went to the store, but I didn't realize it was like neon orange. Honestly, I don't really care. Just keep me motivated to keep it inside the hose reel. Right now I have it spread out, hoping it will warm up enough today to loosen it up so we can stretch it out and straighten it and get it put into the new hose reel. Oh, I ran out of space in the shopping cart when I picked up the used, so I stuffed the wave petunias inside the hose reel. Turns out, hose reel, perfect fit for wave petunia pots. Look at that, fits right in there. Like, really, it was a perfect fit that worked out really well. Their hose reel broke, so that's why. I grabbed a new one, didn't put any research into it. I just saw it, that'll take 225 feet of hose, and I said, okay, yeah, that'll do, fine, it'll work. So, orange hose, going to go in there. I need to dig this area out. You can see all the pool stuff and things that I've been going through and trying to sort like timers and things. I'm gonna go through it and, I don't know why I thought I could hold that with one hand. Get this all cleaned out. It's been a time, long time where there was a huge flagstone under here that this sat on top of. I'm gonna try and dig that out because I would like to just get that looking good again. The spot's gotten what junk. I mean, you can tell it's gotten junky, right? With all the different hoses and things going. That's another reason I had mentioned that I was going to be redoing my drip this year because it's just everything's out of control. 
amongst many other reasons that it just needs to be redone. It's been a long time. That was the catalyst that started everything, that needing pool salts, what sent me to Home Depot, then not having pool salt, you know, sent me to the other Home Depot. And that's how we went from having four hanging baskets to a dozen. They got rained on pretty hard, had a storm last night. So they're not looking their best, but that's just the way it goes. I'm glad they got some fresh water. I, you know, water them by hand, obviously, but there's just something about rain. It really refreshes them. Yeah, they look pretty ragged right now. You know how that goes. A couple hours, maybe a day, they're going to perk right back up. Oh, look at you. You just want to be the star of the show, Turbo? I know this quantity probably seems aggressive, but here was my thinking. A four-inch Vista bubblegum from Proven Winners generally range from $5.99 to $6.50, somewhere in there. These were $7.50 a piece. So it was two for $15. I mean, that's, that's such a better deal. There are four plants in each one of these. I don't get as big as a Vista, not quite the same vigor, but if I'm saving that much money and I'm going to have this many of them, I don't care. They don't need to be as big as a Vista. I'm sure I'll still plant a few of the Vista petunias out here at some point. Just an absolutely phenomenal money saver, and not all these are for here. Too. I'm probably going to be using maybe half of these. The other half are going to some other places. I don't know if I'll be filming at those homes or not when I get working on them. I also picked up ooh, how many? Six of the purple petunias. Do you have a name? Lavender Sky Blue. It's just a nice purple. I always like having some purple out here. They have more fragrance to them too. I originally picked up three. You just saw me. I had the other three that were stuck inside the hose reel. Gonna have fun planting those around. I never plant enough purple. It'd be good to get those in the ground. Oh, and then the willow, the other Home Depot plant. This thing's pretty cool, isn't it? Is it? Does it toe the line between tacky and awesome? I can't really tell. I think it's awesome. What else to say about it other than it looks cool? This is going to look really good, I think, in some of my more squat planters, the shallow type bowls, something like that, with a bunch of annuals, a lot of green at the bottom. It's just, it's giving me a formal vibe, but also kind of a jungle y thing going on because of the wood and the shape to it. It's reminding me of, you know, when you see the ficus that wrap around the other trees kind of like that but obviously not because it's much more formal but that's just i don't know that's what it reminds me of so i'm gonna have a lot of fun planting that up really cold hardy so it'll be a perennial even in a container it should be fine during the winter time i'll probably throw something over it just to be safe to help keep the wind off of it won't dry the wood out too much you know winter winds can be pretty damaging the way the cuts are made in here up top doesn't look like it'll really be realistic to keep that woven pattern going It'd be fairly easy to do. It's nice about willow, right? Very flexible. People have used willow for centuries, millennia. Use willow for various things because of that flexibility that it has. And so if you let the top go enough, maybe you'd get enough growth out of them and keep cutting them back and thicken them up and you could keep that pattern going. I'm good with this. I don't think it needs to be any bigger than that. I think the only trouble I'm going to have with this one is going to be making sure it gets enough light. It's a willow. It needs full sun maybe part sun might be okay but if you've been around here for a while you know i talk about around august ish lose a lot of sun when the angle of things shifts and start moving more towards fall it's down there behind the trees and really the only full sun spots are like smack dab in the middle of the patio so i i guess if that happens i can just move it and maybe it'll have to go hang out on the front porch or in the driveway when the sun shifts off of things, but you still get several months to enjoy it. The other nice thing about willows is they tend to flush out fairly early in the season too, earlier than a lot of the other trees that have planted back here, like the Rose of Sharon's and Mimosas, those things. So get some green out of them probably around April, late March into April. I'm guessing it'll look just like this. It's going to be some maintenance to it, right? Have to keep all this stuff cleared off of the lower branches to maintain that shape. Otherwise it's just going to turn to a wild bush and someday someone will come by and cut it back and find that interesting habit on the inside that could be a fun surprise and then from home depot i also got the use which are, they're on the other side of the yard <laughs> so i'll show them to you later or i'll completely forget i don't know, they're used well i love them not the most exciting plants right you saw them when i picked them out picked up the other two when i was there yesterday to get why, why did i go back yesterday i can't even remember the hose reel now i have two more use which is exciting because that's what i needed to fill everything in and when i was there before they didn't have enough okay before moving on i'd like to go ahead and just get this popped open because i don't want to leave it sitting in its box too long things are all over the place that's the way the vlogs go my orders from proven winners this year oh that is an extremely low plane why are you so low that was Kind of freaky. We get a lot of air traffic over here, but never that low. They're usually way up high. You can barely see them. I hope everything's okay with that plane. 
So proven winners, as I was saying, I placed my order back in the spring or spring winter time. So I don't really remember everything that I ordered and I made an effort to not peek so that I could be surprised with everybody else and then have to go, hey, why did I order these? I moved this outside last night and popped it open. So there's some water in there. So everything's gotten a drink, that's good. I think this is shipment one of three. There should be more on the way. These are just, they're the little guys. Typically when I order from Proven Winners, it's only because there are things that I just never see at the nurseries and I would like to give them a try. It's not necessarily going to be anything mind blowing exciting. Sometimes it's just annual. Yep, that's just an annual. I'm actually thinking this is probably the same thing to order too. Yep, coleus, ridiculous coleus. I felt ridiculous ordering these online, but I just haven't seen them at the nurseries in the last few years. And when I do see them, it's moving into fall and I would like to plant them up well before fall so they can get their nice big size on them. I first planted these, I wanna say, I don't know, three years ago? It was whenever they first released the ridiculous and I absolutely loved this coleus. It was a nice color of red really great growth habit to it and then I couldn't find it for sale again so I paid the premium and got the two of them. I have an area where I wanted to plant a whole hedge of these things but I'm not gonna do that because you know they cost a lot more when you order them online. They're also the types of plants that get really big like I was talking about the vistas before and compares to the wave petunias. Wave petunias get plenty big but the vistas get so incredibly big that they kind of take the place of two or three of a wave petunia really but I got four in there so I still feel like that was a better deal. Coleus in general usually pretty big plants depending on the types right there are tons of different types of coleus but the ridiculous is a big one i think it was like 18 to 24 inches i feel like mine was even bigger than that so 24 to 40 inches much bigger than i remember so only need a couple of them anyways because it's gonna be really big impactful plants they're so pretty too i love the burgundy foliage there's some green splashes in there the more light they get the more red that they'll have the more intensity they'll have it'll be a little bit more intense they need a mid-season cut back i think i may have had to cut mine back twice I think because it was so vigorous. I don't, I don't remember. That was a few years ago. It's coleus and it's exciting. What else? Oh, I remember this one. This is a fun plant. I've wanted one of these for such a long time. I know it doesn't look like much yet. And oh, I think a bee just stung me right on my back. Yep, right in the middle of my back. Turbo kept, he was sitting next to me and he kept going at something on my back. I guess I know what that was now. Thanks Turbo, you tried to save me. I appreciate it. Doesn't feel very good. Why'd you do that, bee? I thought we were friends. It's my first bee sting. Been stung by wasps before, but that it just looks like a little honeybee. I, maybe it got stuck in the waffle net of the hoodie and started panicking. I don't know. That didn't feel good, though. It's fine. Just a bee sting. Doesn't even hurt. Wanna Sarah Kinsley's ghost. This is a really cool honeysuckle. I've wanted one of these for such a long time. I first saw them on Garden Answers channel a long time ago. I'm pretty sure they dug it up and moved it. It's been a while since I've watched other gardening channels. Lots changed over there. Maybe they moved it or gave it away. I don't know what the case is, but it is a beautiful honeysuckle. The Kinsley's Ghost, it is a vine. Look about six to 12 feet tall. You can keep them pruned into more of a bush shape, but they're going to look best if they have something to lean up against and flow over the edge of. I'll have a picture up here on the screen so you can see why it's so cool. These big round silvery blue leaves. Doesn't that just look awesome? It's not one you really grow for the flowers. I think they just have small inconspicuous yellow flowers on them. It's a plant you grow much more for the dramatic foliage. They have great leaves on them. Hardy all the way to zone four. This is a great option for people who live further up north and want a plant with some big impactful leaves. I mean, it's not like they have giant leaves. It's obviously not like an alocasia or something like that, but you know what I mean. It's something that's unique and out of the ordinary and looks a lot like a eucalyptus and that's why I like it. I can't grow eucalyptus here. You, I guess you can, but it dies down to the ground and you'll get a few sprigs of it to come up out of the ground every year and that dies down the ground. A few more sprigs come up I just don't think it's really worth it, especially when you have such a wonderful alternative that's also a native. Not really sure where it's native to, and I'm pretty sure that there's a patent number on the plants that I don't, where we we don't patent native plants. That's confusing. Cultivar of the native Lanacera reticulata, the name for that one. It's not invasive, shouldn't take over, but it will fill in a big area because, you know, six to 12 feet tall, five feet wide if you don't have that up on a support, and that's going to lean over it and maybe do some running. Hard to say. I don't know. I haven't grown it. They're listed as not invasive, so that's great. 
beautiful foliage, part to full sun. So that's going to be four to six hours a day or six hours or more of sun, meaning you have some options as to where to put it in the garden. You could use this in a cottage style. You could use this in something more formal as long as you stay pruned on it. If you're like me and you're trying to get a tropical impact, you want that eucalyptus vibe, you're going to get that from this. It's just a great plant. I'm really excited about it. I'm so glad that I finally have one. It's not something I've ever seen at the nurseries out here. Hopefully that'll change over time because it's a really cool looking honeysuckle. Was that fun? Three little proven winners plants. That didn't work out. It's supposed to be down in there. Get back in the box. Okay, now let's pivot this direction and look at the other annuals that I grabbed here. I got another six pack, not another, my only six pack of the red candy uh, impatience, sun impatience. I kept wanting to say petunia. My mouth wasn't really connected to my brain there. I have tons of petunias, not petunias, impatience up here. It didn't work out very well with my mic. I have plenty of the larger size, but I wanted some smaller ones. I was hoping to be able to find them in a six pack to put into other containers or maybe a flower bag, like the flower bag that I have over there. Jury's still out on whether or not I like the flower bags because they are a monumental, I'm talking about this thing back here, by the way. Here's another one up here. Monumental pain in the butt to keep those watered. Once I have them up on drip, I'm sure it'll be a different story. I think these would be beautiful in a flower bag or just if I have some other spots where I would like the color, but maybe the root balls are gonna be more tight. So remember, I have all these big palms that are gonna be coming back from the greenhouse here in a few weeks and uh, some of those have some pretty tight root balls on them, and I can't go pop in one gallon containers down around those roots, so got a six pack of those as well. And then these, which I was so excited to see. I don't know why. I mean, I'm pretty sure these are a staple with annuals at this point. I kind of tidied up the tags. Look at that. What a mess. Okay, that's a little bit better. These are the Catharanthus soirees. They're just, you know, the little mini thinka, and I absolutely love them. This is soiree kawaii lights purple which is, you know, kind of a lightish pink with a hint of purple in there. It's actually more purple in person. I usually color adjust things, so maybe that will fix it. It's coming across kind of pink on camera. Not this pink. I don't know how to show it up on your screen, but it's much more of a lilac than that pink. And then there's the Soiree Kawaii Paprika Red, which, you know, it's red. What I'm seeing on my screen looks pretty much how those look in person. And then uh, one of my favorites, the Soiree Kawaii Blueberry Kiss. Look at those flowers. Just a nice purple flower on them. I have four of each color because I could not remember the quantity that I used last year and I liked them enough that I'll be spreading them around and probably using them in containers for some other things that I'm doing for other people. The other two are back there. So there's, you know, didn't have enough space here for all of them. Low maintenance annual, they need a good amount of sun. Pretty drought tolerant though, I would say not as drought tolerant as just your full-blown vinca. At least that was my experience last year. I had to find a balance last year when I was growing them between uh, keeping them hydrated and not rotting them out. So there were days where they're like, oh, I'm so thirsty, and then I'd water them, particularly talking about the blueberry ones here, and they started to fizzle and rot. And I was like, well, all the other ones are fine. What the heck is your problem? I think part of the problem was that they really weren't very well rooted. When I pulled them out of their containers, there was like nothing to their root mass. When I went through and picked these out, I dug through the entire table that had these. They had many to choose from, and I was paying close attention to what the roots felt like, what the pot felt like. I was doing that more so than just being like, hey, the top has a lot of foliage on it. I really wanted to make sure that they were really in their containers and had some good roots on them because I just had so many issues with the ones that weren't rooted well when I got them planted last year. But yeah, like I said, very <laughs> drought tolerant. Hi, you stepped on those yesterday, didn't you? You went running around the back of the car when you weren't supposed to and stepped right on top of them. You just, this is what we're doing now? Just gonna stand here? I mean, it's a lovely view. You got a nice face turbo. I'm sure nobody minds. Okay, you're just gonna sit down and make yourself comfortable. That's fine. You can sit over here. I can reach around. I was almost done talking about these anyways. The seat just burped right in my ear. Rude. Thanks for that turbo. Appreciate it. Getting the bees off me and burping on my face. So, this, what is happening? Is something wrong? With, okay, I'm gonna cut and figure out what's going on with you. Did you step on something or are you just getting sleepy and cranky? It's almost as nap time. I think someone's just getting sleepy and cranky in <laughs> the face. Okay, don't know what that's about. I think he just wanted some attention. Cosmos, the Apollo Mix. I usually like the seashell blend the best. That's one of my favorites of the ones that you just buy at the nurseries, right? Cosmos are so easy to start from seeds, so I feel a little silly buying them. I really only wanted a couple of them. It was just easier to just grab a couple than to bust out a whole pack of seeds and try and start myself when I knew that I only wanted like two to put into a couple of containers. Something about Cosmos to me is very relaxing. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's the combination of the airy foliage and then the flowers where they're held up high. It's a nice papery 
textured petals on them and the giant centers full of pollen. Bees always enjoy them. They're just a nice plant to have around. Something about Cosmos that I just find calming. Don't know what it is. I think it's probably just the airy nature of it, I would guess. And something about it to me is beachy. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I have no idea. That's just the association I get with them. Not sure why. Maybe it's because I used to see them a lot up in the Pacific Northwest, which is, you know, like tropical beachy. But I used to spend a lot of time in Seattle during the summers growing up. And they grew so big and just beautifully up there. So that's probably a big part of it. It's just nostalgia. I just like having some cosmos around. Sunrise Roseland. Montana, one of my favorites. I usually plant a few of these every year. Last year, I didn't, and I regretted it. It's a very colorful lantana with a deeper pink flower that goes into a corally color when they start to move up towards the center. There's lots of lantana to choose from. These are one of the more bushy lantanas. I think they go 12, 18 inches high, something like that, and have more of a mounded habit to them. It's not one of the ones that's going to lay flat and trail. Just fun and colorful. I think that that's it for annuals. Maybe. I'm not sure. I have some new petunias that are over there, but they're getting their very own video. Need to do some growing out and I need to spend some more time with them before I can really talk about them. No, no. I got a fuchsia. I can't reach it. Can I get to it? Come over here. Fuchsia. I buy one every year and then it dies because they just freaking hate the heat. But this is one of the wind chimes. The wind chimes are supposed to be more heat tolerant. I don't know if it says that on the tag. That's just what I remember reading about them. It doesn't, no, no, it doesn't say that. It would be a smart thing to go ahead and put on the tag. Some of these tags are so basic. They need to give people some more information as to why it's a good plant. They don't have the really big bulbous inner petals that I like to see on a fuchsia, like the Winston Churchill classic fuchsia, one of my all time favorites, but it is very prolific and it said that it's heat tolerant. So figured may as well give it a shot. See how it does. Get these put over here. Okay, and now the Monrovia order. Look at these. Aren't they beautiful? Look at those flowers. Absolutely stunning. What a gorgeous plant. Diamantina Coral Orange Sunrise Diplodinia. I tried these a couple years ago when they first came out, and I liked it. Its growth habit was a little bit wonky. The flowers on them were so pretty that it was one of those things where, like, well, sometimes you just can't have your cake and eat it, too. Look at the colors on that. Gorgeous colors. This is a proven winner's plant that they did have online to order and it sat in my cart. Let's do that. You fill up your cart and then you come back to it a few days later. You add and subtract. Well, when I went to place that order with the things I just unboxed, they were no longer available to ship. It, they had them through Monrovia's website to ship. So I went ahead and got two of them. That's what I had wanted. It's an interesting diplodinia. You know, diplodinias, they are a vine, but they're also like not a vine. You have your mandevillas, which are going to want to climb. Diplodinias, like they kind of want to climb. I don't really know how to explain it. Some are more bushy, some are more lanky. This is one of the ones that's going to be more lanky. See, they're staked up. So the main issue I have with them being a diplodinia is it would be nice if they would hold their own better. Like I said, sometimes you just can't have your cake and eat it too. And I love the flower on them so much you can see they open up more of this lighter color with a pinwheel pattern with the yellow and the lighter pink kind of a peach color and they age out into that vibrant coral with the orange center you get a mishmash of all of them on each end of the vine it's just beautiful it's one of my favorite flowers it's a fun tube shape i like the pinwheel the color just screams at me as far as colors that i enjoy having around i was really happy to be able to grab a couple of these looking forward to growing those out this year i'm probably going to try and overwinter them because they're not that easy to find there are more perennials that we'll look at in just a minute as far as the rest of that monrovia order goes the rest of it was just more of the oak leaf acanthus i did a whole video talking about them love them beautiful leaves love their growth habit I didn't want more of the ones in the really big containers. One, because the area where I'm going to be planting them, the soil is kind of hard to work with. And the cost difference is just insane. But that one right there costs just a little bit less than what three of these smaller ones cost. And these are fairly prolific growers. They should be close to that size by the end of the growing season. So now that I can see how big the number one, which is just your gallon size container is in comparison to the number three container, this is what I would have done all along, but it's nice to have the one big one. That's the long story, not so short there. I got four more of those because I had mentioned when I talked about those that I have a whole area on the hill where I would like to space them around. I'm realizing now that I'm not positive that area is going to get enough sun for the acanthus, partially because I'm seeing this one lean this direction, leaning towards the sun, and this spot gets a good amount of light. But, and when it's hot outside, it would just die over here. That would shrivel up and crisp so quickly. 
So I have to really go through it and plan carefully where I'm going to put them. The other advantage to having this many of them is that I can spread them around and wherever they do the best, I can go ahead and add to them in those particular areas. An underplanted perennial, in my opinion, they have beautiful tropical looking foliage. It's very philodendron-y. It's upright and it's stiff and shiny. These will get even bigger and longer as they grow. And this one, do you see it? Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that so fun? That's what the flower buds look like. Looks a lot. Ow, I forgot. Yeah, thistle. Same family, right? It's going to be spiky. I should have known that when I went in there to touch. Why did I do it again? That wasn't very smart. Yeah, four more of those. That's the whole Monrovia order. I don't think I have anything else coming in from Monrovia at this point. And then the rest of the perennials are it's really just a couple fun little things. These are the ones I picked up at Sherwoods when I was picking up the Monrovia order because, like I said, I like to buy a few things while I'm there because I want to, you know, want to support the local business, not just pick up plants from their garden center. The way these online orders work, if you don't know, you can pick out your plants from Monrovia and you select a garden center in your area. They'll tell you which ones that they can send them to. You pick one. And then it just goes on the truck with their next order. And then they give you a call when your plants come in. You go in there and you just walk in and grab them and leave. They said, I don't know what kind of cut, if any, that the nurseries get from that. That's why I grabbed more plants. But I needed them and we didn't need. You know what I mean. Primo Mahogany Monster Hookura. I think these go 12 to 16 inches high and 22 inches wide. Yeah, hardy zones four and up. It's going to be a uh, sun to shade. Perennial is one of the things that's so great about a lot of hookahs is their versatility is where you can put them. I just love the giant foliage on this one. This, you know, it's just getting started too, right? It's only going to get bigger. A beautiful cherry red that's on there. I have a spot where I want to put these that is more part shade. So I'm interested to see how this performs. So sometimes with the hookahs that have the really big foliage and you put them in the part shade, they get kind of long and gangly. They get a nice sheen to their leaves on them. I really like how in the picture they paired them up with some darker foliage and then the nice green in the background so you can see how well they contrast with things. I just love a hookara, right? It's a plant that you grow and you'll have them for years. They're sturdy, low maintenance, sometimes evergreen, just depends on our winters here. And they're very impactful. Those giant leaves that they have, mm, giant, okay, giant is dramatic. You know what I mean? Big, round, broad leaves that are vividly colored. This look great in the garden. Bleeding heart. Not a plant I've grown in years, but people keep sending me pictures of their bleeding hearts and they look really pretty. So I went ahead and I got one. I don't know why I became a hater on these several years ago, the Dicentras. I think that the ones that I were growing were just really old plain varieties that, that really weren't very strong or vigorous. They didn't have nice growth habits to them. But things have changed. We have come up with better genetics in the plants now this one is pink diamond goes 12 to 16 inches high and has a beautiful foliage on it a nice silvery gray texture on it you would think that this is the plant that i would have had around this whole time based on everything i just seen about the cosmos right with the airy texture i like when things move around in the wind and the flowers held up high above the foliage get up in there on the flowers and just read to you what the text says two-tone pink flowers are produced above fern-like blue green foliage all season long unlike other bleeding hearts this alpine plant thrives in full sun to part shade and well drained soils do not plant in heavy clay soils okay so so that's the only part that I might struggle with because, you yeah, know, we have a lot of clay here, but my soil's pretty well amended. This one is supposed to produce flowers all season long. We will see about that. That's the reason I went ahead and I grabbed it. If it's a repeat bloomer, then I figured I would give it a try. We'll see how it does. Looking forward to watching that one grow. They're fun plants. I like a Dicentra. What else? I think that, oh, the what who are the redemption call case yet it doesn't have any color on it yet so there's really nothing to show you but i picked up one of those like i mentioned at the nursery i have some on order but wasn't sure if i would actually be getting them and then hours later i get an email saying my order is ready to pick up and it says that they have it so i guess i'll find out tomorrow or friday whenever i can get out there to pick up those plants that'll be in a different video there's been enough plant hauling and shopping going on in this video that's for sure and on that note let's go look at the rest of the plant there's more not done yet Ginger. Grabbed another one. I already had the two. One and three. I ordered those two thinking that I wouldn't be able to find them at the nurseries or that if I did they're gonna be really expensive, which was true. But they had this one which is much smaller and it costs more than those two that I had ordered. But I wanted a third so here it is. It has great variegation on it. It's getting that morning sun when the shade moves over those leaves will open back up. It'll look great again. The hibiscus. Yeah, I got them both. I know some people are gonna have opinions about that. The cart had a lot of annuals on it. I had a couple more banana trees, a couple more alocasias on it, and I put them back 
so that I could get both of them. The reasoning behind that is that these overwinter very well inside. Very well is a bit dramatic. They're pretty easy to keep in the grow space, so I didn't mind spending a little bit more on them. I don't see them as an annual. These are plants I'm going to have around for a long time. I wish I had a variety name on this hibiscus. It looks very familiar to one that I used to see fairly frequently that I actually wasn't a fan of. It looked like this, but the color was not as saturated. It was more of a pale, very, very, very pale yellow with a slightly pink center to them. These look like they start off with a nice orange color to them. Can you see me look at that? That's a beautiful flower, isn't it? It's orange yellow with reddish orange veining that has the white and fades into the pink. Classic hibiscus shape to it. There's just so much intricate color because of the orange veins that are in there. I think that's all it is that sets it apart from some of the others I've seen that are similar but I wasn't as crazy about. Even on this flower right here that's aging out, it's still absolutely a beautiful flower. So you get some variation with the old flowers and the new ones. Are there any fresh ones on here today that I can show y'all? That would be nice. This is probably about as fresh as they're going to get. Remember, these were in the car yesterday. They were getting moved around. Look at all that color that's in there. Hopefully that's coming across on camera as colorful as it is in person. Orange, yellow, pink, great color combo. And then of course the seminal pink, which is just one of my all-time favorite hibiscus. One of the older varieties has a fun classic bubblegum pink flower on it. The other reason I was pretty hyped on getting these is because they're nice looking plants. These are very full. I had a standard seminal pink hibiscus for a few years. It was slightly larger than this. It was much taller than this one. And I had to get rid of it because it came down with hibiscus scale or snow scale. I attempted to treat it, kept it in the driveway for a season, did everything that I read online that you can try to do for snow scale, but ultimately it just wasn't working and I didn't want to take the risk of it spreading from other hibiscus, so it had to go. So this is a replacement for the one that I had and I actually like it better. It's not as tall. The lead on it is shorter. The other one was grafted up much higher, but this is so much more full. This is a really nice big full standardized hibiscus. Don't know where the snow scale came from. It can take over fairly quickly because it's so inconspicuous. Once it starts, it's pretty hard to get rid of because they are latched into that bark so tightly and sprays and things don't really work on them. And I don't like to do very much with spraying or systemics on a hibiscus because they flower so much. Pesticides affect the pests and then the pests get eaten by the birds and those things. And it's just not a great Thing to do when you have flowering plants. Try and avoid it as much as possible. That's why I just I let that one go, kept my fingers crossed and hoped that I'd be able to find a new one. And here we are, a couple years later, got a new one. Very nice, big, full. This is a much better angle. I was, we were looking at the back of this, weren't we? Look at it from this angle. Look how full that is. It's a very nice graph. They went in from down low and went nice and high with it. One that I had, like I said, the lead was much higher and it just had a few graphs up top. This one, they went down further on it so you get a nice full basically a bush on the leaves it actually looks like a tree my other one was kind of awkward i like this one better the same thing with this one great shape to it so graphs go down nice and low instead of just being focused right up at the top i'm very 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 happy about them only downside to having two different standards is they really need to be put on opposite sides of the yard it's a thing with me i don't know why but when you have standardized plants i feel like they need to match right so they have more of a formal appearance to them since they're different they're going to need to be spaced far apart so it doesn't look awkward right next to each other i think it looks a little silly oh i almost forgot about this banana so this is the one banana that i did decide to go ahead and get this is a musa kokopo i know some stuff about it don't know how to say the name musa kokopo Cockapo? <laughs> Cockapo? Hardly no oppo. Boom, I still got it. It's a fun banana. I initially thought, initially, initially thought that this was a red eye hoeing. It's one of my favorite bananas. They have a very colorful pseudo stem, and the bases of the leaves have a nice reddish pink color to them, which you can see this one has. I was surprised though when I saw the tag and saw that it was a Coco Po. Banana, Papua New Guinea. These only get like five to seven feet tall somewhere in there. The reason they're so popular is because they're supposed to be one of the fastest, if not the fastest, edible banana to plant as far as getting it to grow and fruit in one season. Most people say that if you have about a meter of growth on them and you plant them in the spring, you should have fruit by late summer. It's not only that they fruit earlier, that inflorescence that comes out is supposed to go ahead and flower and ripen in a much shorter amount of time so that you actually get the fruit in the same season. Live someplace with cooler weather in the fall and cold winters, 
there aren't many bananas you can grow that will actually give you fruits that you can eat. Most bananas need at least 12 to 24 months for them to grow and put out their flower and for that flower to produce edible fruit. So that would be exciting. There are some types that will flower for you in a single season. A lot of the velutinas and some of the more dwarf varieties have really neat looking inflorescence on them. I'm looking at bananas right now. That's why we're over here. Bajus, I've had them produce an inflorescence for me, but it's not edible. And I've talked before about how it really just, I think, creates chaos, sucks the life out of the bananas, and then I have a big hole in the middle of the mound. It's not even edible. Well, it is edible, but it's not uh, something you would want to eat. They're full of seeds and don't taste good. Whereas that cocoa post is supposed to have a nice tasting fruit with an interesting color to it. So I figure I'm going to plant that right over here with my bajus. It's hardy to zone eight. I'm zone seven. We'll see what happens with it. I needed to redo this mound right here. We've talked about that. We'll talk about that more in the garden tour that's going to be coming out in a video or two after this one as far as the plan with that banana goes or as far as the plan goes with the bananas in general. Some changes that might need to be made out here. Hopefully this will go ahead and do its thing this year. I don't know. We'll wait till later in the summer and see what happens. Okay, and there it is. Thanks for hanging out. I had a good time doing the shop, and remember, that was mostly all spread out throughout a few days. I don't typically just go nursery, 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 and grab plants like crazy. I went ahead and I just got clips of while I was at the places so I could put it all into one video and uh, get a layout of what I'm working with this year. This is pretty much everything. I did put a lot of annuals back so I could get that hibiscus, but that's okay. There are things to make a hanging basket, and I was like, you know what, I just won't make the hanging basket. I'm okay with that. I'd rather have the hibiscus tree. It's to make two hanging baskets, not just one and then the bananas and all those other things got put back i'm happy with what i got i love the plants looking forward to getting things planted which i'm going to get rolling on here pretty soon so we're supposed to have like a five or six day storm here in the midwest i think like mid to upper texas oklahoma and over we're all supposed to just like get pounded with rain for the next six days of today tomorrow and that's it to get things planted up and i would like to make a dent with these plants because they're both are eating the patio got to get some of these in the ground it's better to get them in as soon as possible anyways now that i'm pretty sure we're safe from frost we had a scare the other night but it didn't get as cold as i said it was going to grounds warmed up right around 55 to 60 in most areas so i'm confident that just about everything probably including the sun and patient should be good to go Oh, and the vinca. You saw the vinca, right? I forgot to talk about the vinca. And the lavender, but you saw the lavender. It's a vinca and a lavender. Forgot to mention those when I was going over all the plants. There are so many because all these orders just rolling in at the same time. And it seems like more than it is because of the dozen. It's a lot. I know it's a lot. I mean, why am I trying to minimize things? There's a lot going on here. Like I said, though, thanks for hanging out. It was a fun week. Really happy to be stocked up on everything and to be able to get going in the garden. Hopefully it warms up enough to be able to get this hose straightened out. It's like 55 today and I keep pulling on it and it's not straightening out. I want to get all those curls out of it so I can get it to go back on the hose roll without having to break up the hose roll. Comment down below say hi. I love talking to everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life. Everything's going absolutely beautifully for you. Whew, I said that fast. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.